Hey everybody, this is, I'm laughing already. This is Sister Soul Rock and welcome to the Sister Soul Rock show. My disclaimer first, as you know, I have some technical challenges. So this is not a fancy video with fancy um, filters. I won't have things popping up at you. Like I can't point and something will show up and I can't edit and who knows how it's gonna go. And of course, I don't like write a script. I will, I will. It won't always be just kind of ad lib, but tonight it's another ad lib. I do have a few notes that I scribbled down. Um, but, so welcome to the Sister Soul Rock Show. You just got my disclaimer. The Sister Soul Rock Show tonight is dedicated to the Bee Gees. Earlier, I made a post saying that I was going to watch uh, the Bee Gees documentary on Hulu. Oh, wait, I wanna go back to my disclaimer. Okay, and as you can see, I don't have any fancy um, copy or signs. So if you can read this, it's probably backwards. This is the closest I can get to let you know that I'm talking about the Bee Gees. You know, how to put that I'm talking about the Bee Gees and name on the show. One day you'll get that video, but tonight it's not gonna happen. And I am hiring a technical person. And I'm very serious about that. So somebody DM me if you're in the greater Cleveland area. But anywho, tonight's show is dedicated to the Bee Gees. Um, the Bee Gees. Um, Robin, Barry, and Maurice, and of course, the little brother, Andy. The Bee Gees have been recording since the 1950s up until maybe the late 2000s. Um, of course, after the two twins passed away, I'm not sure how much new music they're making, but I heard about this documentary. I don't know from who, who probably, I don't know, maybe it's Steve Harvey's show, because I listen to Steve Harvey's show every day of my life. But anywho, um, I want to say that I am a huge fan of family bands. Of course, the first band I ever met and knew and loved was the Jackson 5. Like right now, it would be cute that I can say the Jackson 5 and point and picture a picture of the Jackson 5 would show up. So we got the Jackson 5, so pretend like there's a Jackson 5 picture there. Then we got the Silvers, pretend like there's a Silvers picture right there. We got the Emotions. We got um, Sister Sledge. And who else is a family member, family group? Anyway, the Jets, remember the Jets? It's a bunch of them. But anywho, the Bee Gees is, of course, one of my favorites. Earlier in my post, I said, I'm gonna watch it and that if I don't come back with the post about them, somebody call 911 because I may, you know, may not be here because I physically have a chemical reaction in my brain and in my body that goes off when I hear their voices when I hear their music. It could be the music, their voices, anything if I see them. And I did look up chemical imbalance. I know I'm using this term wrongly, but I like the way it sounds, chemical imbalance. It makes sense. So, like I said, I just finished watching the documentary called um, the Bee Gees documentary, How to Man a Broken Heart. Uh, I was thrilled when I heard that they had made one because I love them. I'm gonna think back to the first time that I heard the Bee Gees. And of course it was 1975, which was a fantastic year. I was in the uh, fifth grade and elementary school in the fifth grade. And it was Jive Talking. It had that, that click, click, clicking noise. And of course, ah! okay, it's okay. My arm just knocked over my signage that says the Bee Gees, which is my mirror with the Bee Gees that I wrote in a marker, in a blue marker. See what I'm saying? It is what it is. This is my studio. I do have my own apartment now, so I do. I'm almost there. I don't have all of my belongings because I have all of, I must have at least four or five, at least three copies I know for sure of the Santa Life album. I have the Bee Gees Greatest Hits. Um, but I am going to go back in time and get some of their earlier things from the early 70s and 60s. Um, but anyway, um, and also I'm thinking about starting to go fund me because my stuff is still in another state and it's going to cost several thousand dollars for me to get my stuff. And I'm serious. I need to go fund me. 
Anyway, let me go back to what I'm doing. So I remember the first time I heard the Bee Gees, of course, they're probably on the radio because back then radio was everything. Every state had its own radio. It wasn't owned by one company. Um, there were DJs who went to broadcasting school. And I just remember hearing their voices. And, you know, of course, it was a great song. We partied to it. Um, thank God she's resting in heaven. My mom, Rose Marie. I am, I, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. When I'm talking about the beaches, I'm going to cry. And if I talk about my mom, I'm going to cry because my mom passed away. But I'm so grateful that I grew up in a household. Oh, and thank you. This is my, uh, my uh, rock hair. Uh, my rock band here, so thank you very much. Um, anywho, I'm just a silly person. Um, my mom had all types of music playing in the house. I'm so glad I grew up in a household where music was played. I'm so glad I grew up in a household that music was appreciated. I'm so glad I grew up in a household where music was allowed, every type of music. So we flipped through our albums, my mom's albums, she had everybody. She had rock. She had soul. She had R&B. She had pop. She had everybody. And we listened to music every single day. And don't get me started on those Saturday mornings cleanup. You eat your cereal. You watch some cartoons. You clean up the house. Whatever you do on a Saturday, you should be home for Soul Train. So that was our Saturdays growing up in a black household in the 70s. So the Bee Gees was a part of that group and my mom had the Bee Gees, she had their music. So of course I grew up thinking that, oh, you know, these are some brothers because their harmonies and their falsetto was just so sexy and it was, everything about them was just amazing. So what I learned um, about the Bee Gees, first, let me go back. When I first saw the Bee Gees, I fell in love with Barry. Oh my God, he was tall, thin, but muscular. He had that hair on his chest and he had that wavy hair that was just that fly wavy hair and that mustache and that beard. And then he had these two guys next to him. Growing up, we just heard the music on the radio. We didn't know every little detail about musical groups as we do now. We know, we know when they go to the dentist. We know when they breaking up. We know when they wake it up. We know when they, we take, they, they take a number two. We know when, how much money they have. We didn't know any of that stuff. And the thrill of that was amazing because we don't need to know all that stuff. All we knew was that they made a record in the studio and it was playing on the radio. They'd be on Soul Train. They'd be on American Bandstand. They'd be on all kinds of shows. We went to their concerts. And that was music, and that was all we needed. But that's all I need. So, when I first saw Barry, however form that I saw him in, my eyes bugged out. Now, this was the era of Leif Garrett. So, all a lot of girls, black, white, and everybody in between, Leif Garrett was this, I forget what he was. I think he was a rock star in the acting. He had this wild, crazy blonde hair. But then came Barry, and he was just like, oh, oh my God, he is so fine. As, as a young girl, my level of love for grown men was really kind of crazy. I don't know if it's a father issue thing, but you know, I grew up without a father. But I was in love with so many grown men as a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, a 12-year-old, and so on and so on. And I still love him. I still love him. Linda, his wife of... His first and only wife, I believe. I believe, yes. I'm 99% I'm sure of that. Uh, she's a lucky woman. It's a blessed woman because um, he's just he's just a bomb.com. Later on, literally, I did not find out that they were twins. Um, Maurice and Robert were twins. I didn't find that out until like, really like about 25 years ago. Like, they're twins? Like, who knew? Because we're always expecting twins to look like. So it's the three of them singing jive, talking, you know, because using saying jive was a you know slang that we used in the seventies, and it was just fantastic. Then the next thing I know, like a year or so later, a couple of years later, uh, Saturday Night Fever movie came out. So I'm getting ahead of myself. So what I learned first of all from the Bee Gees is that uh, Eric Clapton, thank you, Eric Clapton, plays a huge. Um, 
he plays a huge contribution to them coming to America. He actually suggested that they come to America and record because first of all, they were huge in Australia and I think they're from Australia. See, see, I didn't read my background. I actually have the Wikipedia up in front of me. <laughs> I don't have my glasses, but I can see some of it. Um, they were on the Ed Sullivan Show, of course. They were on Lucille Ball. What is this they saying? The other artist. Who, anyway, see, I can't read them anyway. But Eric Clapton told them that, you know, uh, to come to America uh, to record because, of course, they were, they've been singing since they're like five and five years old you know as a, as a brother team their mother and father you know they were, the dad was had a band of course he didn't become successful so of course he you know lived that you know through his sons so i'm gonna look at my notes for a second so of course and i think eric clapton also suggested they become a little bit more an r b and i learned that the Bee Gees, of course grew up listening to black music like who doesn't who didn't if it wasn't for us, where would the world be anyway? So, which is good. They grew up on the Motown and everybody in between. They mentioned Motown and Smokey Robinson. But of course, who didn't? One of the things I also learned was that they wrote a song, uh, one of their biggest hits. I think it was probably their first number one hit. Maybe, maybe not. Don't quote me on it. Uh, Someone to Love. They actually wrote it for, for um, Otis Redding. And before they got to record it and give it to him, he passed away and um, like who knew these things? Like, wow, that's so amazing. I love documentaries about bands, rock bands, R&B groups because we're on the other side of listening to this great music, these harmonies, these voices, these melodies, these instruments. And for me, knowing the background on how it happened, writing a lyric on a napkin. You wrote this because you broke up. You wrote this because your mother passed away. You wrote this because you were driving on the freeway and there was a clicking sound on the bridge that was being made as you drove on the bridge to go to the studio, which was how that clicking sound, that clicking sound is in Jive Talking. That's one of the stories that they tell. That is like mind blowing to me. So you're on the freeway, you hear this clicking sound and you turn that into a beat because you keep hearing it in your head and you go in the studio and you create jive talking. So anyway, you know, you learn things like that. And um, yeah, so he said, um, oh, and they got together with a guy named Arif. I forget his last name, but I do remember him in the respect. Shout out to hmm, Ronald Wayans. Oh, he did a good job. Um, Oh my God, Aretha Franklin, of course. Um, oh my God, I'm glad Aretha Franklin, I love her. I'm forgetting because I'm so excited. You know I get excited and I forget things. Um, crap, I'm gonna Google it real quick. But see, this is the kind of stuff that picks up my nerves with me. <laughs> She's the dream girls. Oh, if I drop that one more time, okay. Respect. Cass. I know her name. I'm just uh, Jennifer Hudson. Oh my God, Jennifer Hudson. Okay, the, the, the voice of the century. And what? Why did I bring up Jennifer Hudson? Okay, Marlon Wayans, Jennifer Hudson, in the movie Respect. Of course, this guy when they were at the studio, he was there. His name, his first name is Arif. And to look at him, you would never know he was responsible for a uh, a number of hits, hundreds of hits behind Aretha Franklin, Donny Hathaway. Uh, he was a producer, rather, and that's the only two people I wrote down. But anyway, so what else did I learn from my favorite band? Who, in the post that I said, when I hear their music, I just, I just, my body starts to move and my brain just feel all tingly. And I do something like, you know, I do something. I either sing or I just move and I just freeze. And I just like, it's like my blood is like swishing around in my body. Their, all of their voices just does something to me. Uh, another thing that I learned from them that they broke up in 1969. They started having some hits. Everybody's ego got in the way. They wasn't even talking to each other. I think it was Maurice said he had six Rolls Royces by the before he was 21. So they over here making in the 60s making millions 
six Rolls Royces before he was 21. And he said, fame, everybody handle, handles it in a different way. And of course, it being new to them, you know, they, you know, they handle it like they handle it. So they broke up. And then I think, oh, Robert, he did a solo album. Uh, I think Barry was writing for other people. And then Maurice, he was off doing his thing. And, you know, of course, everybody had some some little, some low points in their life like we all do. But eventually they all came back together. Um, oh, just one little thing, because I don't like to, I don't like to speak more positive of, 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 of all the bands. I mean, I need to take a sip. This is just a little bit of wine. Uh, one thing they did do, just a little gossip, was that they would talk about each other in the press. Now, can you imagine that being like right now? But they just had newspapers. It was like in Australia and the UK. I don't know if they were over here, but uh, over here are newspapers. But, you know, I think like Maurice said, oh, Barry was rude. And uh, Robin was doing an interview and the reporter showed a picture, you know, all of them, a portrait. He was like, oh, do you miss your brothers? She was like, um... Well, you know, not really. We're brothers. We see each other. Well, let's just move on. So they, you know, things got a little bit messy, but they're brothers. A lot of bands break up, but you can't break up from your family. I mean, you can if you really, really want to, but of course they didn't. Thank God they did. And they were too close. Their family was too close. They just had a couple of hiccups. So they got back together. Um, and another thing I learned was that racist people always... The devil, he, they always find a way to destroy things. Um, I don't know how, you know, me being, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade in the 70s, third, fourth, fifth grade, you know, as an adult, you know, as a kid, you don't know these things. So I didn't know that people started hating, racist people started hating disco, which is really black music. Um, a couple of, you know, Caucasians and here and then, of course, the BJs, the BGs, and they weren't even, and people start labeling them disco, which they weren't. But they did this huge thing at a baseball game. It blew up all these records. I had heard about that, knew about that. But how right after that, it no one they couldn't get any records played on the air from the Bee Gees because, you know, they thought the Bee Gees and disco was synonymous, and it was just like ridiculous. It's just like the devil's always busy in things, and it's just but she's not going to win. Love is going to rule out. So they had a low period, another low period when they you know couldn't get any airplay or anything like that. And uh, so then they started writing. They've written all these great songs for Celine Dion, Barbara Streisand, uh, who else? Dionne Warwick, Diana Ross. Who else? Oh, Donnie Parton and hundreds of others. They wrote over a thousand records. They wrote over a thousand songs, had 20 number one hits. Um, and let's see, what else did I write down on my notes? I think that's kind of it. It's just a little bunch of scribble. But I just came on to say that please watch, if you're a fan of old school music, if you're a fan of the soundtrack from Sad Night Fever, if you're a fan of falsetto, if you're a fan of harmonies, if you're a fan of any music that came out of the 60s or 70s, if you're a fan of disco, if you're a fan of dance music, if you're a fan of just good music, period, if you're a fan of rock or pop or R&B documentaries in any kind of form, unsung, rock docs, however they come behind the music, we behind the music, please, if you don't have Hulu, and who doesn't have Hulu or Netflix, like, it's like four dollars. Everybody has four dollars. Okay. No, I take that back. Okay, that's a whole other story. I'm not counting anybody's money. But please, even if you do it for a trial basis, please watch the Bee Gees documentary, How to Mend a Bo Broken Heart. I watched it with the first five minutes. I was crying because Barry comes on and he mentions that you know his immediate family is gone, which is you know you know all the brothers have passed away, and um, that was heartbreaking. The rest I. You know, the tears were just right on the tip of my eyes, ready to fall. And then I was sitting on the edge of my seat because it was just so enlightening and so good to me. And I can't say enough of it. The Bee Gees documentary, How to Mend a Broken Heart. If you want to learn about the Bee Gees and how they became the Bee Gees and who they are right now and what they went through, just beware. If you're like me and you have a chemical imbalance in your brain when it comes to the BGs, 
Well, be prepared because it is amazing, amazing. Then let's see if I can get some Bee Gees playing before I get off of here and hopefully nobody will cut me off because they hear something. Oh, I think this is coming out. Let's see if it's gonna come up because I just got, oh no, that's not it. Anywho, I'm gonna go and um, I just wanted to come on and say, please watch on Hulu, the Bee Gees documentary. This has been Sister Soul Rock and you are watching the Sister Soul Rock show. I hope on Instagram and YouTube. Instagram, like see, I could be pointing, see, here's my Instagram, here's my YouTube, but it's not there. So I'm on Instagram and YouTube at Sister Soul Rock. Sister Soul Rock, spelled sister, S-I-S-T-E-R, soul, S-O-U-L, and rock, R-O-C-K. Sister Soul Rock on YouTube and on Instagram and watch the Bee Gees uh, documentary. It was amazing and I love the Bee Gees. And if Andy, I mean, if Barry, Andy, oh, so cute. And I wish I had all my stuff. Once I get all my stuff and I get a technical person, my shows are gonna be off the chain because I could be holding the Stand Alive album we could go over each song. We'd have that picture of John Travolta. Oh my God. Oh, and what I learned too was that they did not listen to, they did not watch the movie. When they wrote, when they were asked to do, write some songs for the soundtrack for the movie, they didn't listen to it. They had already started making some music and the music just happened to just marry what was on the screen so perfectly. That has got to be one of the most amazing soundtracks. It's like the top five in my book. I can't even, well, the Rita Franklin, um, Rita Franklin soundtrack to, um, shoot, here I go again. That's the dog on shame. What's the movie? Um, they made another one of it. it had Irene Cara in it. And they had Michael Phillip Thomas. Hey, Michael Phillip Thomas, call me because you're still fine. What was it called? Irene. Okay. I think I'm on Google. Michael Phillip Thomas. Movies. Oh, jeez. Okay. Sparkle! <laughs> Anyway, I'm not gonna claim that. Sparkle. With the Franken, you know, she wrote the Sparkle soundtrack. So Sparkle and Stand Alive. I actually got a, you know, I'm gonna do a show one day on some soundtracks. Oh, wait a minute. And, um, mm, oh my God, Superfly soundtrack. Curtis Mayfield. Oh, wait, don't get me started. Anywho, so anywho, this has been the Sister Soul Rock Show and Tonight's show was about the Bee Gees as my cardboard sign made in marker blue and, blue and purple says attached to my mirror and my disco ball and my rock hair. The Bee Gees documentary on Hulu. You gotta watch it. You're gonna love it. I see you guys next time. And I'm still working on a greeting and a tagline. So all I can say now is Sock it to me, baby. Sock it to me. I wish I could say, can you dig, dig me out? But Steve Harvey says that, and that's been his thing. So, but that's perfect. Because I want to use some 70 slang, but um, I'm going to come up with something. All right, I'm going to go. It's been 24 minutes and three seconds, and hopefully I'll be able to cut this out. And hopefully I can upload this, and you'll be able to watch it. So this is Sister Soul Rock. And um, I don't know. <laughs> Give me five with a backhand sign. Oh, my God, I need I a I I sign off. Sock it to me. But see, we say sock it to me, it sounds more like, I don't know. Anyway, I'll figure out something. All right, this is Sister Soul Rock and my disco ball, and I'll talk to you guys later.